Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I am back with a Watchmen Season 1, Episode 1 reaction and review. Now this TV show was not necessarily what I was expecting because it feels very different from the comics as well as the movie in terms of tone. But one thing it does that is very similar is just like the comic book, it deals with very real issues that we're dealing with in our everyday lives. Before this series, they focused on nuclear war. That's the story of the Watchmen. It's what Osmandius did to prevent United States and Russia entering into a nuclear war. And now this episode in this series seems to be focusing in a lot on race relations. And that's where we start in Tulsa, Oklahoma in the 1920s. We see African Americans be shot and killed. And we see this boy be sent away by his parents carrying a piece of paper that says watch over this boy. This boy ends up grabbing a little girl and then he walks presumably to safety. And that's what this episode dives into the most, is the concept of time and chaos. That time keeps on ticking and it will eventually lead to an end. And even when things look good, the clock is still ticking. And now we'll see what that means in the modern day. And that's what we see following this new character, Angela. And she's in a class for parent-teacher, really displaying what she does as a baker. And this world is very different from ours currently. For starters, Richard Nixon has been a president for a very long time, when in reality, he stepped down from his presidency because of Watergate. And in this world, Nixon was so loved, he stayed for more than two terms. And then Robert Redford came in and became the new president of the United States, and he still is in this world. We see people using pagers instead of cell phones because they've been outlawed. We see racism on the rise. When Angela's son gets angry at this kid for making a comment that Angela opened her bakery using the president's social welfare programs. Really showing the families that these children are coming from. Even officers now wear a mask because they're trying to protect their identity. And this is what happened with Angela. She was attacked as an officer. So now she hides behind the identity of a baker. And what we see in this episode is that the threats rise again in the form of the Rorschach cult, or the Seventh Calvary. They're a very extremist, far-right, white supremacist cult. They're also truth seekers, and they're wearing this mask to support Rorschach. Rorschach is a vigilante who also stands for truth. Long story short, in the last series, Osmandius wanted to stop nuclear war, so he blamed Dr. Manhattan. Rorschach disagreed and thought the truth needed to come out, so he was killed. But his journal was passed on to journalists, and the truth got out. And because of that, it spawned this group called the Seventh Calvary, who are now using Rorschach's memory for their own personal agenda. And in this episode, we saw Angela, or Sister Knight, get onto them. She went to go confront them, but they're heavily armed. We heard that the 7th Cavalry haven't been around for three years. In this time, they've stocked up on ammo, they have a plane. They even have cyanide pills to kill themselves to keep them from talking. So clearly, they have a long-term agenda to push their motivations. And a good thing too, we saw Judd riding Night Owl's vehicle called Archie, and that was destroyed. But all in all, it seems like a victory for Judd, Angela, and the police department, but they're wrong. Time keeps on ticking. And we see this when Judd goes around the dinner table, almost saying goodbye to all of his friends and his wife before finally making his way around the clock. Because his time's up and time repeats itself. This whole series started with somebody called the Comedian who was murdered and his emblem was a smiley face. And as he died, his emblem was covered in blood. And now Judd has been hanged, his badges on the ground covered in his own blood. It just shows that time repeats itself. And in the comic, we went back and we understood who the comedian was. He was a deeper character and not necessarily a good person. But we got to see his impact on the world and on the people around him. And I think we'll go back and have flashbacks of Judd. We know when he was having dinner, he snorted cocaine or some type of drug. Clearly, he has struggles or demons in his closet that we may explore because there seems to be a lot more to him than being an unmasked commander. And next to Judd is an old man holding the same letter that that boy from the 1920s was holding. And I think it's safe to say that this is the same person. But what's interesting is that earlier he asked Angela if she thinks he could lift 200 pounds. You think I can lift 200 pounds? 200 pounds seems to be the weight of Judd. So either this man knew that Judd was gonna die and he was gonna be there, or he has some weird connection in relation to time. 
And that really looks at Dr. Manhattan because he's not even human anymore. He's like a god. He exists in every moment at any time. Time has no meaning or value to him. He coexists through everything. And maybe Dr. Manhattan could have a connection with this man in some respect. Because time passes and history moves on, but at the same time, ironically, time repeats itself. And that's what this episode in this show seems to be about, and what Judd was talking about. Time keeps on ticking and it will lead to an inevitable end, an apocalypse. We can get over it and it will move on and we can be happy again, but it is essentially inevitable. Much like how the comedian was murdered by Osmandius, thrown out of a window to die because he knew too much information. And the symbol of him lays on the ground soaked in blood. And the same has now happened to Judd, his badge on the ground soaked in blood. So it seems clear that time is coming to a peak again. In the past, it was the threat of nuclear war. And it was stopped by Osmandius who can be considered a hero, but he had to kill millions of people to frame Dr. Manhattan. But now it's clear that Osmandius is up to a new plan. We see him old and alone. He has two people with him, and they seem to be his caretakers, but they don't seem human, or they seem off. Veidt is known as the smartest man in the world. He's great at genetically modifying, and potentially could change the environment. These reigning octopus or squid are a direct result of Veidt. Whether it's a side effect of him spawning in that giant squid in the comic book, or him continuously doing it now as part of his plan, I don't know. But he may have created these two people, and he tells them that he made a tragedy and it's five acts, and both of them are going to be playing the leads. And it's called The Watchmaker's Son. And The Watchmaker's Son is actually Dr. Manhattan. His father was a watchmaker, and Dr. Manhattan essentially became a god, and was the scapegoat to save the human race. He was the person who the people blamed so they didn't fight each other. So based on face value, you could say that Vite is planning for these Vite is planning for these two people to be the scapegoat for an event. Or it could be something much bigger than that. But only time will tell. But anyways, thank you so much. I absolutely love this episode. Please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.